the very layered and rich history of Winslow really as a series of transportation corridors. So the railroad came first and then Route 66 uh, came afterwards. And as a result, downtown cores were built by railroads. They have a lot of older buildings, so they have a real character to them. We have important ancestral Hopi history in the area, railroad history, Route 66 history. You're staying at La Posada it gives you that real sense of that time, bringing it back to life. La Posada was a Harvey house. They were every 50 to 100 miles along the railroad because that's as far as a train could go without getting water or fuel. The La Posada was built in 1930, was the center of everything. Designed by Mary Elizabeth Jane Coulter. It was her masterpiece. I worked for Fred Harvey in the summers of 1956, 57, and 58. What is a Harvey girl? They were very highly trained waitresses working in the Harvey houses along the Santa Fe Railroad. <laughs> Lots of memories. <laughs> the Bright Angel, they had a live band there that played every night. I would teach people the bunny hop. Just so fun. One of my friends picked me up and swung me around and my shoe came off and went over the rim. I have shoes in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> this is our rogues gallery. These are people who have stayed here at La Posada. We greeted people from all over the world. Over 100,000 women worked for Fred Harvey. A lot of them were coming to get away from abusive households. It was a very liberating experience. They helped develop the West. They married the cowboys, railroaders, and that was how the West grew. Something called heritage tourism really took off and people wanted to discover Route 66 again and not take just Interstate 40. Well, standing on the corner. <laughs> they got the flatbed Ford. Every town needs its identity and this is certainly ours. People come from all over the world to go stand on the corner. I've heard that song a lot uh, in 30 years, uh, but uh, thank God for the Eagles and Jackson Brown. It's part of really the renaissance for Route 66. It's brought a new revival to Winslow. Right. There was a lady years ago, she rode her horse cross country. She could not believe the space that we have. We're the gateway to everything. The Grand Canyon, painted desert, petrified forest. The Little Colorado runs down to Grand Falls and it drops. It's higher than Niagara Falls, but it's chocolate. And then we have the world's smallest church. <laughs> <laughs> the way that the West developed over time, the tail end of that story is Route 66. It's wonderful to see things coming back to life. This was very lucky to get built, you know, during the Depression. This is the last of the great Harvey hotels. The mission of the Harvey Girls is to save that history and to keep it alive. Route 66 has some real characters, aren't it? It's just filled with all sorts of ideas, whether it's kachinas and carvers or weavers or ranchers or railroaders. You're always sort of encountering a lot of cross-cultural situations, and they're very inspiring. I'm from east, way east, almost west. My husband, Atsu Sakurai, is a sake maker in Hobart, Arizona. I'm from Japan, near Tokyo. I make Arizona sake. I like sake. <laughs> I am the only person to make sake in Arizona. Route 66 is a big deal in Holbrook. In some of the historic places, we have El Rancho, Navajo County Historical Museum, Romo's and Joe and Aggie's Cafe, and Wigwam Hotel. It was an inspiration for the Cars movie, the Cozy Cone Hotel, concrete teepees with classic cars outside. We have a street called the Bucket of Blood, <laughs> across from the railroad tracks. There was a shootout between the sheriff and some outlaws. Hobrook was known as the toughest town in the West. People, I didn't believe I can make sake in Holbrook, Arizona. What? <laughs> when they have my sake, they're surprised and wow, it's good. Holbrook water is very good for sake. Air is dry, it means the contamination is less. That's why Arizona sake tastes very clear and very pure. I love living in Arizona. Holbrook has a special place in my heart. Local people is really supportive. They are encouraging me. I think they have much pride in Arizona sake and not so. Drello from Phoenix. We thought this is an awesome day trip to take. What makes sake special 
and how it's made. Because this is with my love. <laughs> with That's love. Right. <laughs> I mean, it makes me proud to see stuff like this on the map in Arizona. It's so cool. Three type of sake I make. Arizona sake, the original type, and sparkling type. Almost like a champagne or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And then Navajo tea sake. Very good. Anybody that tries it, you can taste the difference in the quality. Regular one. And this is what you won the award for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Tokyo sake competition. First place outside of Japan. I was happy. <laughs> it's really delicious, very fresh, very smooth. Thank you, thank you. I'm making sake to make people happy. This is my business. People who travel from Chicago to LA tell us the favorite stretch is this stretch here in Arizona. You will never find better people. That's right. And you people in Route 66 are like one big family. People here are very friendly and very helpful. Folks who live and work on 66, they're piece of Americana. If it wasn't for the people, it would just be the buildings and the road. Route 66 is a perfect domestic road trip. It's got a huge horizon and vast distances and, and desert vistas. It's, it's all postcard stuff. The people want to travel Route 66, America of yesterday.